Hello and welcome to Talk Gnosis, the web's talk show about Gnosticism, mysticism, and anything else we feel like talking about. I'm your host, Deacon Jonathan Stewart, and joining me is Bishop Lainey Peterson. She's back from the Pleroma. She's re she's redescended. I have redescended, and I, I needed to take a mental health break, which I did, and a very fine mental health break it was, but I'm thrilled to be back on the show as one of the co-hosts, so it's great being here. We're, we're thrilled that you're back, and we've got a fantastic uh, guest who's been doing some, some really interesting stuff, both in his own community and online through uh, podcasts and YouTubes. Uh, I just said YouTubes like I'm like I'm 70 <laughs> years old. Uh, the YouTubes! <laughs> the YouTubes! He's on the YouTubes! Yeah. <laughs> He's got a show on the YouTube. <laughs> uh, we have Reverend Sean Guerin of the Second Congregational Church of Greenwich, Connecticut. Uh, uh, Sean's been doing really fascinating work with the Gnostic text, really exploring Gnostic Christianity. Hello, Sean. Thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. It's yeah. been really cool getting plugged into your community. I'm actually going to the to the conclave. Yeah, uh, somebody invited me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the mentioning conclave, by the way, I'll do the plug at the top. Yeah, there you go. It's, <laughs> it's, it's very soon. It's it's. Uh, of course, I don't know when I'm going to put this out, <laughs> but <laughs> it is open to everybody. So feel free to check that out. Uh, Joanoid.org slash conclave. It's all online this year due to the crisis. Might as well do the plug for that now since it's organically come up. But yeah. you know a plug that nobody wants to hear <laughs> and it will not come up? <laughs> <laughs> is patreon.com slash gnostic we literally can't do the show without your financial support if you are able to help us out you can do it for as little as a dollar per piece of media you can put a cap on that in case you're scared we're going to do a million pieces of media uh that month and uh in return you get uh the shows up to a week early sometimes even earlier sometimes a bit later but you get them early and if you want to do one-time donations you can do paypal.com slash gnostic we understand if you love the show even if you mildly like the show if you're watching the show and you want to help us out you can do so uh if you can't help us out financially by telling people about the show sharing it just taking an episode and emailing it to someone who you think might like it uh liking and subscribing on youtube or also on all the podcatchers so leaving us reviews and subscribing there so thank you so much now it is time for the good stuff sean please tell us all about yourself and, and what you do uh, yes, so I, I'm a congregational minister here in Greenwich, Connecticut. I went to an evangelical seminary, uh, which is an interesting path uh, it, as I ended up in the most progressive and liberal denomination, uh, mainline denomination, the United Church of Christ. Mm -hmm. um, they actually vetted me to make sure that <laughs> I was, I had, let's say, how to say this, evolved a little bit from my um, from, from the idea of, you know, making sure everybody, uh, followed Jesus Christ a specific way. Um, and that evolution continues, <laughs> um, in, in my work, but yeah, I'm, I'm a traditional minister for a mainline denomination, uh, the UCC, and I work in the, this beautiful community, uh, in, in Greenwich right outside of New York City. Uh, for people who don't know, can you talk a little bit about um, uh, the United Church of Christ and Congregationalism? Yes. Um, so the United Church of Christ, not to be confused with the Church of Christ, who's probably like the complete opposite of us, um, is the Church of Firsts. You know, the first female ministers we ordained, um, the first LGBT uh, ministers we ordained. And you'll usually see us, you know, on the news or... Uh, or, or any me uh, media on the front lines of, you know, protesting for Black Lives Matter, for um, open immigration policies, and uh, yeah, and the like. So we're, uh, our church is open and affirming, and a wel we, we tout our, you know, extravagant welcome to all. Wonderful. And uh, uh, I should mention here, as, as loyal listeners and watchers know, that uh, I grew up in the United Church of Canada, which uh, is in communion, I believe, with the with the yeah. uh, with your community. Uh, and it's it's a beautiful, wonderful community. And I didn't leave for uh, any reasons <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> to do with them. 
So, and uh, sometimes I miss it, and you know, maybe maybe I'll go sneak out some Sunday morning and yeah, uh, yeah, um, uh, uh, hit them up. So, um, okay, so, so so you you've been on this spiritual journey. You sort of already flowed from one form of Christianity into another, into a very open form. But you know, that said. Uh, uh, as I said, it's been a long time since I've been to United Church, uh, but uh, I don't remember them talking about any Gnostic texts. No, so, no. so how did you first get interested in the Gnostic texts? So, um, you know, my my boss, the senior minister here at our church, uh, is a Yale a Yale Divinity grad, and he was trying to get me to go back to school for um, an STM, and I went up to to Yale and was just like, I've done so much theology. <laughs> Uh, so he, he, we, we talked about it more and, uh, for some reason he brought up psychoanalysis as a type of, uh, you know, to see if I was interested. So I visited the Blanton Peel. People probably know Norman Vincent Peel. He has a, they have a school. Um, he partnered with a psychoanalyst to create a, you know, mental health is, should be an important part of, uh, our spiritual journey. And so I went there and long story short, you know, in, in the schoolwork, you know, I'm a, now a second year student who sees patients, but yeah, you know, Carl Jung is, is like the, the, what the better half of psychoanalysis, <laughs> there's, there's Freud and um, who I love, but uh, Carl Jung, yeah, I started reading the red book and started reading um, books by Jung and, uh, it, in one of the books, uh, I think uh, maybe it was Stephen Howler that uh, actually wrote it. But in the preface, it says, you know, now that we found the Gnostic texts in 1945, uh, we need to get these books in the hands of a Gnostic. <laughs> <laughs> and Young very much is, you know, self-proclaimed, you know, he's he's mentioned them before and in, in his works, but I just kind of went with his idea and I really got it, this idea of myth and using myth as a way of expressing the, the inner world of our psyche, uh, which, you know, led me to getting the Gnostic Bible, which led me to reading it, which led me to reading the Gospel of Thomas, which will, I mean, if, if anybody, has, if you read that book, and, th and that's the thing. In school, we're told not to read these books, you know, in, in typical seminaries. When I opened it, I, right from the start, it's, it just, it described what my experience in psychoanalysis has been, where it's, uh, once you, once you seek the truth, once you find it, you'll be astonished by it. And that, you know, that's kind of what psychoanalysis and therapy does is you're astonished by the the defenses you've put up inside behind the the traumas and the the bad experiences you've had but either you know i, I in, in my reading of that text which led me to um the gospel of mary you know i know these texts aren't necessarily gnostic but they they <laughs> they set you on the course into Valentinian texts, I just, I'm addicted to this. It's really, I can't believe how much it lines up with my my schoolwork as a psychoanalyst. So yeah, that's, I got introduced to it by, by accident, by going to school and, <laughs> and pursuing, you know, education. Yeah. Well, I, I think loyal listeners, uh, loyal viewers who have their shot glasses lined up for the Tognosis <laughs> drinking game, uh, you can take a shot because uh, you, uh, something I say quite a bit whenever Jung comes up is, you know, Jung, uh, I always mangle the quote, but he, he said something along the lines of death psychology, you know, his school of psychology yeah. that he invented. He said he invented it, then he read the Gnostics, and what, what Gnostic material is available to him at the time. He said, oh, they did it first. This, this is what I'm doing. But yes. They did it a couple thousand years. Ago. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Yeah. And even the words, you know, um, in the, they actually use the word therapy. They use the well, the word um, self analysis, which I'm like, yeah, they, Young didn't make this up. This is, this was there. Yeah. And the Gnostics were onto it. Yes. 
and and sometimes it's not necessarily psychology that, that we would recognize, but it's it's very difficult. I would say you, I I think you really have to make a real effort not to read something like Secret Shot and not see the psychological <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> metaphors and allegories in there. I'm not saying it's just a psychological allegory and metaphor, of course, but uh, I think you'd have to be really obtuse and really making an effort not to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Sean, uh, what inspired you to start working with these texts in your community, and, and what's the reaction been? Well, um, what got me to do it, so I, I get to do this um, Saturday night service that for our church, you know, for a very traditional church, uh, was this this exploration. We have, you know, we have, we have a very big church uh, sanctuary, and we also have an, a beautiful chapel. And in the chapel, we we call the chapel the lab, <laughs> where we, mm -hmm. you know, we were, you know, we have traditional music, organ, you know, let's try some music, let's try some, uh, you know, we had services that were more like a love feast, you know, like a dinner in the early church. Um, and I always like that model of just kind of sitting around and talking about the Bible rather than preaching the Bible at, you know, at people and so that's we had this service that was like that then covid hit so that kind of when you can't have dinner together and, and sit in a circle that takes the fun out of it um so we had to i i saw this window of opportunity where i was like you know what i've been reading these gnostic texts for a while as a hobby you know just in my i i've wanted to share them they they were popping up in my sermons but i you know in that little parable form and you know hidden it secretly in my messages so i thought you know what let's stop being secret about it and what if i just instead of using a traditional gospel you know as my sermon uh primary source what if i used a gnostic text um and like i said i know uh, the gospel of thomas is probably on the the the, the lightest which which is why i started with with thomas um, but still, I've been called uh, the Antichrist online. It's I, I never have been called that before. And and what are you what are you doing? Thank you. I, <laughs> I mean, the fact that you're even a candidate I, is really I think speaks volumes. <laughs> well, I've never I've never was criticized before. You know that I, I I'm probably the most calm and collected person you know not that's that's my that's what you see um but i i am a pretty calm guy and and nobody has ever been offended by anything i've taught before uh, and i didn't even like in in my teaching i strategically start with so much i actually use more of the bible than i ever have mm -hmm. just to show the tie-in Mm -hmm. you know in into the there's continuity in the in the texts um but yeah so i i was started out as an experiment then easter was coming mm -hmm. i i said to my wife you know hey what if uh what do you think about mary i i think that would really uh piss people off <laughs> but at the same time be very timely for mary who's so such a prominent character in in the the easter story and as I read through it to see if I should, you know, should I go there? Because that's that's a little bit of a jump from Thomas to me, <laughs> especially because there's so much missing. I actually, being so aware of the the biblical text as my background, I could see so, it's like it popped out as these are all the parts that they cut out. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, all the, the ladies in the church, we're like, wow, uh, there's a there's a woman, you know, women's character in, in the Bible that that was hidden, typical of what men would do. <laughs> and so the, the response was just so great that I went with it. Uh, and yeah, I, I nobody's told me to stop. I definitely thought I would be stopped by now. So haven't <laughs> well when the show comes out i'm, I'm gonna label it uh, interview of the antichrist uh, oh, that's good for years. seo <laughs> exactly it'd be perfect we'll get lots of hits i hope uh, my face doesn't pop up though yeah <laughs> we'll uh we'll uh we'll uh what we'll do is, is we'll photoshop some horns on you thank you even better yeah. 
<laughs> uh, Bishop Landy, before I barrel along, do you have questions, comments, anything you want to you want to bring up before before the barreling continues? Well, I have to ask the question first of all: Was this somebody from within your community that called you the Antichrist, or was it somebody outside <laughs> on, on on the YouTube's? Uh, who uh, yeah. was it was on Reddit, I, I, and it's not even the first time on LinkedIn. Actually, a pastor I really loved. I th actually used to, I well, I still do, <laughs> but he called me a heretic, uh, and yeah, that I'm teaching demonology, and that was just for quoting Young, uh, but he, yeah, there's a lot of pushback, you know, it's those Anglicans and those Catholics that can be a little uh, touchy about well, guarding. I'm, you know, I'm finding it kind of odd, because I, I actually am far more conservative um, particularly now that I've gotten older, but I, I went to a moderate seminary, Garrity Evangelical, um, yeah. and while we didn't really mm. study the Gnostic Gospel, we were aware of them, because when we were studying church history, you had to be aware of them, and there was still a lot of the Boltmanian notion of a Gnostic and under every bushel basket, um, that kind of <laughs> thing was, was was going on right then. Um, but the reality was, is I mean, I remember seeing parallel, you know, go um, gospel parallels that did include the Gospel of Thomas, yeah. Um, that, that you know that was going on. So I, the and then Jung. Well, yeah, I mean because many seminaries at that point were taking stuff from uh, modern psychology and, and and psychotherapy. You know, mental health uh, preparation was be, had become you know, far more, shall we say, scientific. So yeah. I'm just really rather shocked that you would get that reaction. It's one thing to critique. Um, you know the the yeah. what's in the Gnostics, so-called Gnostic scriptures, or critique Jung um, uh, from a, a Christian or a Christian a smaller Orthodox position. But I'm just finding this absolutely fascinating that you got such a huge reaction. <laughs> yeah, right on my LinkedIn, which didn't look good. I, I I thought he might message me, but again, this was a a pastor who I heard worked in Starbucks just to reach with young reach out to younger people and and then to hear that I just didn't you know what I, I I do have a little bit of a naivety when it comes to how 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 scary it is yeah especially in this time you know to maybe chip away at a at what people you know this, I've heard this term the security blanket of religion <laughs> Yeah, and I know that people are having uh, mental health issues right now because of what's been going yeah. on, and people people's buttons um, perhaps are easily yes. pushed. But that was yeah. that really is is quite something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the most for the most part, it's ninety eight percent has been wow. Uh, this is so in in what a great word enlightening to to hear. Uh, a fresh take on scripture. If at, at worst you learn something, you yeah, know, that's that's. No. Well, I mean, these books were there, and they were part of. They were part of. You know, the, these at some level, uh, these stories were part of a mythos of some branches of yeah. the church. When, when, you know, before things got formalized, so why wouldn't somebody want to know about them? That that's what I'm not particularly getting. Um, I am actually curious about one thing. I have noted in my own work that many of the so you know the so-called Gnostic books, um, they don't necessarily preach that well um, for me. Um, you know, <laughs> I use the Revised Common Lectionary, uh, yeah. and I found it to be just incredibly well thought out and well done. I'm curious as to what has been your process with. And if you can maybe even point to some uh, the texts that you, you find that can form a basis for inclusion in a sermon, I'd be really interested in hearing what you have to say about that. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm cheating a little bit because I have class every week, full time okay. classes in psychoanalysis. So you know, for example, uh, you know, error and ignorance as a theme in right in in the Gospel of Truth uh, and object relations. Uh, okay. Just the the um, the idea that there's you know we create this object of God. Here's where I'm going to maybe get in trouble <laughs> by, by disclosing my real thought process. But the idea that you know there's an we have an idealized self 
and we call that God. Mm-hmm. And and when we don't live up to that idealized self, that's the super ego yelling at us. Um, you know, I just recently spoke to Diana Butler Bass. I mm-hmm. don't know if you know. Uh, yeah. And she she's writing a she just wrote a book, um, talking about how she's growing in her faith. And I asked her a question, you know, especially with deconstruction as a big movement in Christianity. And uh, as we move away from these old constructs of God, you know, in the context of object relations, I said, are we, you know, are, are we really moving away from them as the crutch of what we're really trying to say is that what I think where Psalm 86 says, are we not all gods, mm-hmm. you know, in some way. And, and, Uh, as Paul writes in our, you know, as we should stop drinking milk and grow up a little bit (laughs) in our faith. And eat meat. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. This idea that we have to move out of one stage and into another, and that maybe God doesn't want a bunch of children, but wants us to all grow up. Like that's Mm -hmm. what parenting is all about. It's about raising your kids, not so they stay in your house all, you know, let's say the church, but that they would move out of the house and come over on Sundays to have dinner. But like my parents, they kick us out at at one, some point. And maybe, you know, maybe God is, is not so, is all about, you know, sucking everybody into uh, this, into this one way, but rather excited about the real tree, you know, and that's, you know, the idea of, um, Jesus dying on the cross in the Valentinian text. And it's really just symbolic of a tree dropping seeds and that we would kind of be our own trees one day. Uh, and it, it ties into psychology. Um, and then for, you know, in the Gospel of Mary, I wrote a whole paper on um, the amplification of the feminine and how, you know, women's voices, as Jung said, you know, Christianity, Protestantism is mainly a, a male religion. Uh, how maybe we, if we amplified Mary in the text, we actually might hear a much louder voice than is described in the text. Even if they intentionally made it more masculine, it still would be revealed in the text, at, especially, especially if you look at the word ruah and spirit as as more of a feminine voice you'll see how much the feminine is fully in partnership with with the masculine you know that's mm-hmm. often dis- ascribed to god but I, I i pull on those those the psychological themes that i'm i'm you know const growth and development uh object relations uh and you know all other kinds of you know neurotic behaviors as a as symptoms of, you know, of the the errors of error and ignorance. You know, why why is there evil in the world? Well, why is there? Why do human beings have neurotic symptoms? Okay. <laughs> and so on. Uh, on uh, yeah. yeah. So it sounds like you 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 you're you're busting out of silos, and instead of treating biblical studies or theology uh, as, as one thing, you're you're actually taking your your professional your your new academic and professional training and bringing those in together in a way that obviously is uh, touching. I would imagine touching the souls of your parishioners. Yeah, yeah. I mean the the Valentinians uh, and the Gnostics. You know, the Hebrew word tefillah means inner inner reflection, and that's the word for prayer. Right. <laughs> uh, and the Valentinians saw Jesus more of as a soul healer mm-hmm. and the healings and the blindness and the paralysis that, you know, is described in scripture. It, it's not that it was actual blindness or uh, being mute or having a defect. It was more of a s- symbolic of a spiritual uh, deficiency caused by ignor- ignorance and error. Yeah. Interesting. 
Yeah, and now um, again, line up the shot glasses because whenever somebody says fascinating stuff like this, <laughs> I always say now we need to do a show on, but we definitely need to do a show on psychoanalysis and uh, Gnosticism as well as separate shows on uh, Jung and obviously Gnosticism. Yeah. And actually, I, I've been wanting to do a, a show. I mean, I, I don't understand him, um, but I, I can pretend I do. But Lacan and um, oh yeah, uh, yeah, Gnosticism. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, all, all for the future. Those are future shows. Got to live in the present with the awesome show <laughs> that we're doing right here. Um, yeah. Sean, what texts have you worked with so far and, and what do you have planned for the future? So I've done the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of Mary. I'm deep into a series on the Gospel of Truth. And my wife said, when is this going to be over? Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> which, which, you know, I, I would probably have 15 parts, but, uh, I think this will be the last week. And I actually had a, a Yale scholar offer to do the uh, the Apocrypha of, of, of John, which I, I think he's moving, so I may not be able to grab him. Um, but if I don't have him, I, I might do uh, a shorter Valentinian text. I think I'm, I'm getting ready for Philip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck. I, you know, I'm, that that's more of like, which, where can I keep my job? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, that, you know, I'm sure nobody will say, it. but also be faithful to, I don't want to water down the, the Gnostic. I'm going further and further in and deeper and deeper into what would be officially be called Gnosticism. Uh, and teeing up the, I think, the gospel of truth really tees up duality. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I mean, if I mention the word Yaldabaoth in a sermon, I think I'm done for. <laughs> <laughs> Is Antichrist okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I could tie that. There's so, but if I have to explain. <laughs> Old Yaldi. Yep. Oh, that what I remember when I first started doing this. I was so confused by, you know, these were like the pleroma, you know, what, what is that? I, I've even, my other Christian friends who are, you know, doctors and in seminary are like, where do I begin <laughs> with this yeah. stuff? Um, and talking with some, some of your community, I'm kind of jealous of the vocabulary you already have uh, because I, I just don't, it is a big subject and I don't want to do wrong by it by jumping into something before I fully have wrapped my head around it. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the vocabulary can also be a burden because once you yeah. get quite used to it and you're talking to normal people, they don't have a clue what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, a lot of times people are going to come to, to Gnostic churches like like my community and uh, Lainey's community. They're, they're not going to, they have a, a, an interest in uh, Gnosticism. Or sometimes they're just looking for an alternative, right? And it's like, yeah. this, seems, this seems neat. So if, if you hit them with the vocabulary, like, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's difficult. It's, um, and... And when you spend, I think, so much time as, as a lot of people like me and people like me, real hardcore Gnostic nerds, it does, when you're really swimming in it, 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 it becomes difficult to communicate with, with uh, normal people. So <laughs> there is some advantages to not Down the normies, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, somebody told me that when I was in one of the Gnostic channels, I found them through Reddit. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, I had a real moment of gnosis listening to your message. And I went, what is that? Like, what's a moment of gnosis? And then I obviously, and I was like, oh, that must be like, they must have lingo. Like, we have lingo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there, yeah. Well, the only thing I would also say about this, and I think one of the things that can get really complicated, or, well, that makes things more difficult, is that many modern Gnostics, we, you know, we fully admit that we don't have this consistent tradition handed down through millennia uh what we have are some books that you know some of them survived and hung around for a while but then a whole bunch of other books that got discovered uh you know 80 years ago or whatever it was and yeah. um you know you're trying to make the best of this but without that context of a broader tradition yeah. and theologians and people who wrestled with this not only at the academic level, but also at the parish level, 
which of course has really informed a lot of traditional Christian theology because yeah, there's that practical theology that is wrought at the ground level when working in community. Um, so I think that that, that that is its own set of problems um, for modern Gnostics or those who are working with Gnostic texts, that the vocabulary and the understandings are not that product of so many years, millennia, yeah. of, of that kind of work. And it's said it's something that people have been cobbling together, sometimes for nefarious purposes, as you might see in some esoteric or, or occult traditions. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, I'm learning the, the bound, like it's a very broad uh, community. <laughs> but, That's one way of putting it. <laughs> one way of putting it, yeah. People, uh, I mean, it's really funny. And we talk a lot on the show just about the scholarly. We've already been doing it, so-called Gnostic, small G Gnostic, big G Gnostic. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let alone the slipperiness of the term, but applied to the modern day, there's there's a lot of groups that you know. I'm not the king of Gnosticism. I'm not the Pope of Gnosticism, right? But there's there's a lot of groups that use the term, and they may not always yeah. mean the same thing. <laughs> so. Oh. <laughs> yeah. um, Something I find interesting too, like you can only do so much, right? So, so Gnostic churches are are relatively small and uh, volunteer run, and our seminaries are volunteer run. And as we've talked about, this is really deep, the hard, the hard stuff to wrap your minds around, as well as getting at least some kind of training uh, outside of theology for dealing with people, right? Yeah. There's just a lot going on. So, so something I find is that is uh, modern Gnostics, Gnostic churches, what have you, don't really grapple with modern theology or theology of the, of the last couple of decades yeah. of the 20th century you know nobody's reading you know the de death of god theology uh strangely uh you know gnostics aren't even reading walter wink so they're they're really you know like uh i don't have an answer for that because i understand why yeah. <laughs> right because there is just only well, so many hours own, of the day you get yeah you and you get in your community yeah. and it, it's you know if nobody challenges it or you know, engages you with it, you know, you do. Yeah. I, I barely found time to do this. And the only way I can get it done again is if I could somehow integrate it, you know, like if I could take my Gnostic research and tie it into my sermon writing, you know, the hours I give to that, I could get away with doing both with one, you know, one stone. So I'm getting paid to be a you know, Gnostic <laughs> teacher right now. <laughs> You're also getting paid to be called the Antichrist, so yeah. you know, it balances off. He deserves to be paid. I mean, it's, it's a hard job, <laughs> but somebody's got to do it. Yeah, even in Connecticut. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Sean, do you think there's any misconceptions about the Gnostic texts and Gnosticism that that you would like to clear up, or or that you kind of want people in general to know about? Oh my, what a great, actually. I, I knew that question was coming and hearing it just sounds so good because that is the question, right? Like what the heck is Gnosticism and Gnosticism and uh, why it was like, why are people afraid of it and why should they engage with it? You know, reading Karen King, which I know, I know is not the only author who writes about Gnosticism. I know there's April DeConnick and, and others, um, but wow, talk about, oh, I think I know what Gnosticism is and oh my God, I don't know what it is and <laughs> I shouldn't have even mentioned it, <laughs> you know, cause we've, we're, we're reconsidering, you know, that's like three of the books on my desks are reconsidering Gnosticism, <laughs> uh, or the, the term at least, you know, I know, I know that there's a whole community around, you know, enlightenment and becoming aware and that the inner the the inner voice of god revealing itself um so purely from my own experience from what i've been learning it's a term that was used in early christianity um to dis basically call out rivals <laughs> and i think it was really towards a type of christianity that had uh um, was syncretic with uh, Neoplatonism and, you know, kind of the Hellenized world, just as they contextualized what I think the Christian message was into their, into their 
their view of of you know how the 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 gods order things um and i think you know i think that still affects the world today in such a it's such a subtle way (laughs) but it's this whole idea that before orthodoxy there was a christianity that was you know, they call it proto-orthodox it was so diverse just as diverse as as christianity is today yeah that uh did not the valentinians the gnostics they went to church with with everybody you know or they they had different you know the word heresy means schools of thought they just they all kind of lived within a world together and in such a divisive way that we see play out in you know politics today uh early christianity set a a tone for drawing boundaries around what was right and wrong and uh i think the gnostic texts if people gave them a chance they would say wow that there there's more to this jesus figure there's more to you know there's more to god there's more to spirituality than what we've been handed down or been told is right and wrong and even the whole you know esoteric and and mystical and all the all the terms we use is it really mystical to consider the spiritual I mean, is it really, or the unconscious? Like we divide this up as if it's a category. Gnosticism is knowing, you know, at least that's, and Jung said it best uh, on an interview. They asked him, do you believe in God? And and this is not a religious man. (laughs) He looked up and he goes, "Uh, I don't know how to answer that. And he thought, I don't believe. I know. And that's what Gnosticism is. Like, I don't believe in God anymore. What a ridiculous thing to have done for 42 years of my life. I think I know now. And that puts my feet, that puts my, my feet on solid ground, like the the Bible says, or the hymn says. Um, And I respect people who believe. It's just uh, the idea of it's better to know than it is to, yeah. I think belief is is what the Valentinians would call stage one. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so that's that's a uh, really beautifully push, and uh, it reminds me. Uh, uh, I recently interviewed uh, Jim Woodring, who's uh, who's an artist who is working with a text that many see as as. Um, Gnostic, but he he's not familiar with Gnosticism, so he's asking me and, and the other host, uh, Jason Memo, about it. So we're explaining it to him, and then he says, oh, do you, do you actually believe this stuff? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> and I don't know if I believe it. I mean, I know that Gnosticism is true, but I don't, I don't know if I believe yeah. it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, no, you know. Yeah, there's yeah, a... Know. Or, or the opposite, I don't know. Yes. And that's that's a clear way of saying it. You know, it, it's not, I don't believe, I don't know. <laughs> um, Sean, you sort of already... This is a question that, that that may seem redundant after after what what you just stated so beautifully. But uh, just to clarify, I find that of course um, our we learn so much from community, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, not from sitting around reading texts, but by interacting <laughs> with them with other people. So, what have you learned from these texts by working with them in your community? Well, I think. Uh... Let me think about that. You know, people, here's what it is. Here's, people have heard every Easter iteration of sermon. You know, they've heard every Lenten sermon. They've heard every Christmas nativity narrative. They know, you know, oh, Psalm 23, I get it. They know Genesis, even from, from kids to adults, they know it or they think they, they, they've heard it. I think that what the Gnostics do uh, is they say it in a way that you have not heard this before. Mm. And when you hear something in a fresh, you know, just like uh, how many Batmans have there been, right? <laughs> yeah. 
And each time it's the same story. How many, you know, it's, uh, it's either Ben Affleck, the worst, right? The worst Batman or, or Christian Bale, you know, or how you know, there's been so Michael many. Michael Keaton. My, yeah, the, yeah. Nobody's can, <laughs> nobody's going to ever beat Michael Keaton. Right. That's that. right. <laughs> but then you go from Adam West to Michael Keaton <laughs> and, uh, you know, sometimes I think Christianity in in all of its in its best way it tries to to do it, it tells you it's Jonah and the whale, you know, Noah's Ark. And and Noah had a big ark and all the animals came in. And then, you know, you grow up and you go, well, how do you fit all the animals in there? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> how do you muck out their stalls? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is so. What and why? Why is Eve always the bad? You know, the the, the bad character. Yeah. And why did God take Job's whole family away? <laughs> and why is that okay? I think the Gnostics take it from Adam West Batman and change it to Michael Keaton where Michael Keaton, you know, that's how dark is that Batman? You're like, Holy cow, this is not for kids. Right. Yeah. And the Gnostics give this color to what you already know. Like you already know the story. Like you'll read, you know, that's what the Valentinians did. Right. They, they opened up Genesis and said, Ooh, or, or they take the resurrection story and they say, yeah, you're not, not only are you immortal, you're immortal right now. <laughs> Take that in. You're not going to. You're not going to inherit the kingdom of God, of heaven, like Thomas says. You're. Or it's already right in front of your face. And that when you that color, that little twist. You know, that's what we do in psychoanalysis. You know, I have a patient who'll say, you know, I feel bad coming. You know, taking an hour out of the day and sitting and talking about myself. And all the analyst said is, says is this, oh, it's bad to take care of yourself. Yeah. You know, they just add a color and now the patient goes, what? I just reflected, it's the same story, but you add a twist to it or you add some color or you take a little uh, of the Greek world rather than the Jewish world or background and it just pops the story into life. So yeah, I yeah. think that's that's the community response has been wow, I know this, but I didn't know this. <laughs> so you mentioned the gospel of truth, the gospel of Thomas, and I would say even the gospel of Mary um, can be interpreted in ways that work quite nicely with mainline churches, right? In my yes. opinion. Although I would actually I do have an argument and uh, the gospel of Thomas is is actually more big genostic than than some say it is, but mm. that, that's for another time. So yeah. <laughs> but they can be at least interpreted, right, in, in ways that work quite nicely with mainline uh theology, mainline churches. But you know, you you mentioned the Apothecon the Apothecon of John, uh Secret John, uh, if you mentioned Yalda the Bayoff, they're they're gonna put you uh you know the, <laughs> Uh, into the Atlantic Ocean and uh, to push you off into a raft. Um, so, yeah. what? What? So, what is the line for you when it comes to to quote unquote heresy? Like, what is like? Do do you have a limit for how far you're going to go with this project and with these texts and with these ideas? I mean, the, I've been the, in seminary. They said we have three years to be a heretic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then once we're out, we can't. We got to stop, yeah. uh, and that always bothered me. Uh, but yeah, I'm. I know this may sound strange, but in a way, I don't know if you've re ever seen or read the Never Ending Story. <laughs> I feel like these texts are like that to, for me. Like it's almost like I'm not. Uh, this for sounds very mystical and gnostic. It's right. And even when I read Young, it's almost like it's speaking to me, like it's telling me what to what to do next. And I, what's worse, right? A mythical character of Satan who I could blame for all my problems, you know, which is again an a, a parable, symbolic of of something, or. To, which nobody takes seriously anymore, right? Oh, Satan made me do it. No, but nobody even take, takes that seriously. But looking at how the Gnostics described that 
you know, that pantheon, let's say, of, of, you know, gods or, or archons and Yaldabaoth. It's this idea that, and, and from what I've read, these texts are explaining something that's going on in our world already, right? There, there are these types of characters in the world, these, you know, these powerful forces with many layers to them, many layers of corruption and ignorance. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, this is, this is where I'm going with it is can those, can the imagery of the Gnostics better speak to the issues we're facing, you know, whether it's uh, police brutality, inequality, injustice, you know, COVID. Uh, and I'm, I'm, because really, uh, is, Ismo, Ismo uh, Dunderberg is Beyond Gnosticism is one of the books I'm reading right now on Valentinianism. Mm. But the idea that these Gnostics used myth intentionally, yes. which is what Jung did, right? He mm. took allegory, symbol, art seriously. If we view these Gnostic texts like john and philip as myth as you know not as a this is what god is but if we use them as myths that describe our inner psyche do they tell that story better maybe they do maybe just by by virtue that they're not the bible <laughs> they tell the story better just because we're hearing it for the first time so i'll take it as far as as uh, my boss, you know, both of my bosses, my senior pastor and my wife allow me mm -hmm. to push mm -hmm. this so that I, and, and I say my wife just because she grew up as a congregationalist mm -hmm. and I could just see the affect in her face when I, when I say something off, she's like, oh man, you, Sean, the lot, like that line, I'm crossing her line. <laughs> <laughs> And she's and my boss is very traditional too. So there's such a good like bound, like check for me. But yeah, I, where is the line? That was said in my seminary so many times that it was a joke. Like we wanted to make shirts that said, "Where's the line?" Because we were always pushing it. Uh, and I don't want to destroy orthodoxy and. But I definitely have the intent of bringing. I've said it in my sermons. We're not. Maybe we're not going to introduce Gnostic texts into the canon. But I intend. Somebody not, noticed. I said they. Go, I love how you drop that Gnostic Bible on the big Bible in your church. <laughs> 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 and that, that's where that's that's the line I'm going for. Is when are we going to include these books? Uh, as supplement, at least supplemental sto stories, as like like a Mishnah, you know, too. Which is also kind of what they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In some forms. Uh, yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, we're we're getting close to wrap up time, and I do say uh, unfortunate because this has been a fascinating conversation. Uh, but before I do, Bishop Laney, do you have any uh, the questions, comments, uh, Sean inspired anything that that you want to talk about? Um, the great stuff. I'm I'm looking forward to checking out uh, some of his his work on the YouTubes. Um, <laughs> and uh, it, 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 it sounds fascinating, and I'm I'm in, interested in learning more. Thank you, thank you, yeah. thank yeah. you. Yeah. So uh, the Bishop Lady mentions the YouTubes, um, so people can find uh, links to everything that you're doing to the podcast versions of of uh, of what you're doing at at SeanGaron.com. Is that correct? Yes, yes, yeah. and that leads to all of our other channels and stuff excellent wonderful wonderful and i hear bishop laney that you have a cool plug a cool new plug i do i do uh one of the things i've been doing during my mental health break is actually getting a new podcast started um <laughs> it's called no chalice required and uh it's actually a wine podcast wine is one of my my interests and i suppose it does have uh some spiritual connotations as well but um <laughs> I've got a, a a friend, a dear friend who is has been. Uh, it was the owner of a wine bar. That's how I met him, and we have launched this new podcast. So if people want to go to nochalicerequired dot com. Uh, there's information about it there, but we're also on all the major podcatchers as well. And moving forward, doing a lot of a lot of fun work. So if folks would like to 
hear my views that have nothing to do with Gnosticism or spirituality, um, but wine, uh, they should check that out. <laughs> Wonderful. And uh, my plug is mylandmeditation.com. Uh, sorry, mylandmeditation.substack. <laughs> Com. Uh, and I know I uh, mutter and slur the words for those not watching the YouTube video or listening to it as a podcast. That's like my end, as in the end of a mile, uh, as in the pulp song. Uh, Mylandmeditation.substack.com. Uh, every Sunday morning at 11 a.m., this is why I can't sneak out and go to the United Church, is uh, open online uh, guided meditation with some, some silence sitting in the sort of uh, secular meditation for everybody. Uh, style. However, if you are spiritual, if you're a Gnostic, whatever, you will get a lot out of it. If you're none of those things, you also get a lot out of it. Mindfulness, it's cool. So feel free to check that out. Come anytime, it's free. Um, I'm also, uh, for my community, uh, holygrail.substack.com. That's my parish in Montreal. We are normally meeting only in person, but due to the crisis, uh, we have moved to online. It's usually every second Sunday, though. For Maeve, uh, for some personal scheduling, for some conclave, we're, we're doing a little bit less. So definitely check out holygrail.substack.com uh, to uh, find out the schedule and feel free to join us anytime, you know, particularly uh, while it's online. <laughs> if you're ever in Montreal, you can come in person. But the, the meditation is going to stay online forever. But uh, Holy Grail will just be online until whenever this finally ends, if it ever ends. Okay, so <laughs> thank you, everybody, so much for joining us. Sean, thank you for joining us. It, it's been amazing oh, thank you for having me okay everybody goodbye take care